All right, so for this problem, this is a specific heat problem. So I'm gonna write out my formula first. So my Q, which is my heat, equals my mass times the change in temperature. So change is represented by a delta, this triangle. Change in temperature times your specific heat. Okay. And so this is the formula that you would get on a test. And now we're just going to figure out what each thing is by reading the problem. So it says, how many joules are required to heat 5.25 grams of titanium? So grams are the units of mass. This is mass. From, this is the initial temperature, so Ti. This is the final temperature, so this is Tf. If the specific heat of titanium is that amount, all right? So the only thing that I need to calculate now is my change in temperature. Remember, change in temperature, delta T, equals Tf, my final temperature, minus my initial temperature. All right, so for this, Tf is 132.5. minus Ti, which in this case is 85.5. And then you can solve that and get your answer. And so when I did it, I got 47.0 for my change in temperature. Now, the reason why it's 47.0, since I am subtracting, my rounding is going to be based on my number of decimal places. And since this is one decimal place, this goes out to one decimal place, this needs to go out to one decimal place. Now, when I plug stuff in, I'm solving for Q because it's asking what is my heat. So I say Q equals my mass, which is 5.25, and my units are grams, times my change in temperature, which is 47.0. Remember, units for temperature are going to be degrees Celsius, times the specific heat. And the specific heat of titanium is 0.523. The units are joules divided by gram degree Celsius. The reason why I included all of these units for you guys is for you to understand unit-wise what the units for your Q for your heat are going to be. Since grams are on the bottom and up top, those units will cancel. Since you've got degree Celsius here and degree Celsius here, these will cancel. So your final units are just going to be joules. Now, the other thing you have to keep in mind as well 5.25, we're now, since we're multiplying, we're basing it off of significant figures. 5.25 has three sig figs, 47.0 has three sig figs, and 0.523 has three sig figs. So your final answer needs three sig figs, so when you do this out, I end up getting 129 joules. Right. Now, notice the question is asking you to solve for joules, so you're actually good to go. If I change the problem up on you and said, all right, how many calories are required, which I can totally do. You need to first solve for joules, which you did here, and then you need to convert into calories, which you learned how to do earlier in this unit. So I'm just gonna set it up. I'm not actually gonna put the answer out there for you. But I'm in joules. I asked you to solve for calories, let's say, even though in this problem that's not the case. So I'm gonna put joules on bottom so that these units will cancel, and I'm gonna put calories up top. All right, remember that in one calorie there are 4.184 joules. So the conversion is actually quite easy. All you need to do now is take 129 divided by 4.184, and you'll get your answer. And that's all there is to it.